Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Virtual DJ Tips. Today we are going to look at yet another new feature in Virtual DJ 8, and this is the BPM Editor. So let's not waste any time and jump right into the software and see what we're talking about. Okay, so as you see, I already have a track loaded in the deck, in deck 1, or the left deck. How do we get into our BPM editor. Well, we can go to the specific track itself and right click on it and select the BPM editor section. Or alternatively, we can just right click on the tap button and the BPM window shows up. So we have this red marker here and that is determining our first beat. I actually chose this song because it is uh, got a variable BPM, but we'll get into that. So that is showing the first beat. It's determining the first beat is right there. The downbeat is always marked by the light gray bar here. So as you can see, you have the BPM, which you can increase in small margins with the two arrow buttons. And you can see the grid slightly move as well. Or if you find that the BPM is double or half the speed, you can change the BPM just by clicking one of these two buttons here. Now, it's obviously not uh, 43, 44 beats per minute. Uh, it is probably closer to 88. And uh, if we did it again, we hit the uh, times two button, it would bring us to 175, which seems extremely, extremely high. So pretty much determined that 87, 88 is uh, about the average for this song is should be normal. Now, if we click on the little dot to the side of the BPM, we can actually reanalyze the file right inside the BPM editor, or we can copy the track from another deck into the BPM editor so that we can adjust it there. You've got your play button, so you can play your song from your start position, which should be the green playhead here. And then you've got the holding while play, or the stutter kind of cue effect, so that you can really zoom in on your BPMs. So in this instance, with the BPM, uh, it is going to be off a little bit here and there because it is a manual drummer, uh, not using a synthesizer. And as you can see, if we zoom in, there's a little bit of variance here. And as we go down the track, it kind of drifts off a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. So if you wanted your grid to be perfect and you weren't mixing by ear, you needed it uh, to create the perfect loop or you had an effect that really needs the CPG, then what we would do is we would go our first red marker is there. We would take our playhead and that's pretty good there. We'll keep going and right about there it starts drifting off beat. So in this case we'll select variable BPM. Two other little options come up. 1 plus and 1 X. The plus is just to add a beat grid anchor. So if we hit the plus, you can see that the beat grid did get adjusted. I'll just watch this area here and I'll, I'll get rid of that beat grid anchor. You can see how the grid adjusts. So I generally recommend um, just going over every fourth beat just to tighten your grid up a bit. So we can go down the list here a little bit longer and the beats all look pretty good there. Drummer keeps good time. And then we get into a different part of the track here. So uh, if we double click, we have the drums in the background. Uh, it's kind of a quieter part, so it's not keeping a steady beat, but you can see that the marks are lined up pretty good with the beat grid. Cruise down the track a little while, while longer, and we start seeing it drifting again. Drifting off beat. So the best thing to do is to zoom out a little bit, start looking at your track, 
Maybe zoom into certain spots. See where you need to make an adjustment. It will drift on and off because, as I said, manual drummer, he can't keep perfect time. And a computer can. Or so we say it can, anyway. It's a little more precise. So actually, adjusting that grid didn't seem too bad. It actually worked out really, really well for us. Uh, for instance, if you had a track that had upswing and downswing and tempo changes, uh, what you could do is you could just do the double click there. Bring in your green marker, hit the plus button, and the grid adjusts completely behind it, and you can move that grid just by, I gotta move the play marker out of the way, but if you didn't have your, your grid perfect, you can move it around. to wherever you wanted it to be so that you could have that perfect grid lined up. I think that's probably pretty good there. The other cool feature is that if you're not uh, good with waveforms and you like to mix by ear, we can go back to the beginning and we can click on this little metronome. What the metronome will do is the metronome will basically snap out the beats for you. What it'll do is it'll kill some of the lows so that you can hear the snapping a little better and see if your song is on beat. So I'll turn on the metronome. You can hear it snap, snap, snap. So that's a useful tool as well. You can also, if you if you feel that uh, you don't need to use the BPM editor, you can alternatively, as we have seen in uh, previous videos, so we can go into the POI editor and do kind of the similar same thing. Try to make this a little bigger for you. And we can find a beat. Take our playhead if it'll want to cooperate. There we go. We can take our playhead. We can select new and we can make a beat grid anchor. And we could just make it invisible and we'll just call it uh, anchor one. And we can move it right into position. And as you can see in the top, the uh, CBG and the rhythm wave are moving at the same time. So you have a pretty good reference. So that's an alternative way to anchor the beats. You got um, The BPM editor is probably the easiest. It's got you the most flexibility. You can get your downbeat right where you want it to. Uh, also, if uh, you want to in the rhythm wave, if you line up the rhythm wave and the track is stopped, you can just tap once or not in this case because we've altered the CPG. If I load another track, I'll show you. Uh, let's say, let's say, let's go to the beginning. And we'll say that's not our downbeat. We'll say that that is our first downbeat. So we line it up here, tap once, and it moves our downbeat marker to the proper spot. Uh, you can also tap it out while the track's playing. Uh, if you've got a decent rhythm and you can tap one, two, three, four, four taps will get you the, the proper BPM. Okay, so that's the BPM editor. That should give you a pretty good understanding of how to use it. Some, some features such as the BPM editor can be a little daunting at first, but as you see, it's actually quite simple to use. You just need to get in there, get your hands dirty, play with it a bit, and it'll become second nature to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd be happy to answer. And if you haven't subscribed already, do that as well. Until next time, keep your head in the mix.